it's been recording for six seconds, bro. Does it really? <laughs> Usually it pops up on my screen that it's recording. Oh, oh welcome to the collective. <laughs> where you see now it just popped up on my screen. Oh, good. <laughs> welcome to the collective where you'll hear all things collecting and much, much more. And Very I can good. say that without getting my tongue all tied. I'm Zach Mo. I'm Collector. So, Collector, how Sir, was your week in collecting? My week in collecting was... What did I do this week? I went to Woodbridge this week. Um, yeah, since we last talked, I went to Woodbridge. Woodbridge is a card show. Yeah, so, yeah, I went to a card show this week. My personal collection grew by three slabs. I got a promo Gengar from 2016 that looks just like the Gengar from Phantom Forces or Phantom Gate. I got the Ghastly Art Rare now that it's not $350. Which one? The Ghastly from uh, Temporal with with Haunter and Gengar on the card where with Gengar's like Gengar's... chasing the Ghastlies. Uh, he's just trying to lick. He's them. doing. He's he's trying to lick. Yes, that one. Uh, gotcha. I got that in both the PSA nine and PSA ten. The PSA nine is going in Zebins. Um, oh, speaking of PSA nine, so would you like a Blood Moon or Luna for forty five? I put it up on Instagram. We'll yeah, see what I also happens. Told you to put up for fifty, and you put it for forty five. Yeah, dude, because no one's buying it at fifty right now on my Instagram. We're gonna talk about buying it at forty five right now. Well, it's only been up for a few hours, but we're going to talk about that this episode. We're going to talk about selling stuff. Um, the third card I got was the Altomar Aerodactyl, which is like an, a promo of the VS series. It's just, it's a beautiful card. Um, so those were the three slabs I got for myself this week. I got most of them in trades. Um, I got a big error submission back from CGC and mm -hmm. I traded a few different errors to, uh, to get a couple gangers and, and then I gotta I send my Pikachu. Altamar. The hollow shift, you should. It's yeah. uh that would be a good one. Um, other than that, almost everything else I did was was for the business. So from a business perspective, um, the week in collecting was insane. I mm -hmm. did well, probably one of the largest restocks I think I've ever done at like at one time. Um and then sold a bunch of it on the stream, and then sold a bunch of other stuff that I had been sitting on for a long time. Um, just to kind of like reduce, I, I was like tripping over stuff in the office. It was like, I just have way too much product. So I sold a bunch of stuff and, um, yeah, I'm, I, I got rid of a bunch of things that I've been sitting on for a long time and, um, a bunch of stuff that's still super popular, but I just had a lot of it. Like I had, there was a, a like a month or two ago, I bought like 1200 packs of lost origin. <laughs> it's just like, I didn't, I did not need that much, but that was what I needed to buy to get the deal done. So I, I sold off some of the lost origin. Um, I sold a, a bunch of stuff to uh, a couple of fellow streamers. And then um, I sold a bunch of stuff to one of my good friends uh, who's a sealed collector. So it was, that was in that way. It was good. I was able to get like a ton of good product and uh, sold off some stuff that was a little bit slower moving. Um, Sounds productive. Was good. Yeah, that was yeah. productive. But as far as like my personal collection goes, it was a pretty slow week. I went in and supported well, one buddy's stream, uh, bought, three packs of Pokemon tattoos, Merlin tattoos. They're rad. And one pack of Pokemon stickers that I didn't know were Portuguese, but they're Portuguese. <laughs> and uh, got one more Kamiya artwork card that I happened to pull from a Breakpoint pack. And that was pretty much it for like personal collection stuff. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it was not. It wasn't a bad week. It was just much slower. The previous time we talked about my collection update, it was collect a con and I made like two of the biggest purchases I've ever made for myself between the pop final and the Hanafuda. So if I have to hear you talking about the Hanafuda's on stream one more time, dude, it, it's if people ask me, I'm going to talk about it. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's, I'm proud of them. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's it. Like for my, for my weekend collecting, there really wasn't a ton else going on. Um, mm -hmm. I did mostly, actually selling and condensing my collection. And I don't, I think outside of Pokemon, I don't think I got anything either uh, collecting wise this week. Um, no new hats, no new cigars, no new stamps, no new shoes. 
video games i got a few what you got like, uh well i mean i think you've been a part of most of them but i downloaded a bunch of video games and i've been playing with my daughter pretty frequently and then occasionally i'll play with my wife my wife and i have been enjoying monopoly and uh wheel of fortune my daughter really likes the mini golf game so nice. that was pretty awesome um we we had a really good time with that and but yeah otherwise it's been like really low-key for me i've been just really busy working and i spent like all of my money on pokemon restock so that's good i apologize for my uh my uh spacing out for a second my insulin pump decided to tell me that something i did was wrong but now it's yeah not it, it wasn't talking about your diabetes <laughs> It, it was just, it was judging wrong. it was judging your lifestyle. It something always did, does. It just something you did was wrong. What did you eat? Your <laughs> blood sugar's high, fat ass. Every I thought your sugar was low, bro. You said you told me when you got home it was low. Yeah, and then I ate ice cream and had juice, and now it's going up. Oh well, you didn't tell me about the ice cream part. You're like, I'm gonna have some juice, and then I found ice cream in the freezer. Well, okay, so now you got high blood sugar. That must suck. Like high yeah. key. That's probably not fun at all. <laughs> no, it really isn't. Because yeah, then no, I feel like shit. Terrible. Yeah, that sounds yeah. awful. I feel like I'm sorry shit, that I'm low. That. Eh, it's life. It's the cards I was dealt. I'm just playing them. Um, I feel like shit when I'm low, so I overeat because I want to get the feeling away, and then I go high. I try to counteract it by taking insulin, but not all the time it works. Not every time it works. Not all the time it works. That was in English. Well, but yeah, that sounds less than less than ideal. Yeah, twenty eight years so far. Still All right, well, you're growing strong. <laughs> All right, so next on the agenda. Oh, sorry if you heard that big cracking sound. Uh, next on the agenda is the weekly market update, market recap. Uh, a lot of weird stuff going on in the in the global market, not just for Pokemon, um, but the market is is tense to say the least. We saw. On Monday, one of the worst days the stock market has seen in the last 22 years, we saw, I think, the Dow Industrial Average dropped 1,000 points for the first time in 22 years in a single day. Um, so a lot of people were scared uh, of what was going on. I actually posted an Instagram story that day that said, relax. <laughs> it was like a video of a someone who's very well versed in stock trading. And, the video, and then my comment was just like, relax, buy low, sell high. Unlike your theory of buy high, sell low. Uh, Always I buy subscribe. high, sell low. <laughs> I subscribe to the buy low, sell high. So stocks are on sale right now. If you're if you're an investor in stocks, I am not really a huge investor in stocks. I have a position in stock, um, but largely speaking, it's stock that I was given through uh, a company I worked for. So I am not like a huge stock guy, but it does inform the decisions of many, 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 many multi billion dollar companies. So it's something I pay attention to. However, fun fact. Over a billion dollars in retail stock was dumped on Monday or sold on Monday. Retail stock is like you own 10 shares of something. You freak out because it's dropping. So you dump it and you, you sell it off and realize your gains or minimize your loss, right? You buy it at a hundred Monday. You, and then it's at like 108 and Monday you see it dropping, dropping, dropping. You, it gets to 101, you sell it, right? So you're like, mm -hmm. oh, good. At end of the day at 89, I made $11 extra per share because I sold at 101. Well, at the end of Monday night, $14 billion of stocks were purchased by hedge funds. These are people with unlimited money. Must be and nice. They said, and they said, well, not unlimited, but largely speaking, unlimited. So a billion dollars of retail sold off, tanks the market. Everybody's afraid. Hedge fund companies come in and say, everything's on sale. <laughs> Damaged merchandise, 50% off. Let's go. So, you know. It's just one of those things that people panic and sell uh, instead of kind of like zooming out and looking at what might happen in the future. And it's a direct reflection of what happens with the Pokemon market. We well, it's see also like what happens when there's a hurricane and you go to the store and there's no more toilet paper or bread. Yeah, a hurricane or a global pandemic. And, you know, people freak out and they just buy, you know, because they're there's FOMO involved. There's a lot of psychology that goes into it, right? There's a lot of psychology behind why people buy things. In the Pokemon market, I see people all the time, the same cycle. You know, we 
we buy when sets first come out. There's all this hype. Everybody buys. And then the cards drop and they cool off when the next set comes out. And everybody kind of gets tired of them. And then they sell their cards when they're much lower than what they were worth. And then they miss them. But by the time they miss those cards, they're twice the price that they were when they sold them. And then they buy them again. And it's like you lost money three times. You bought money when the set was too expensive. You sold when the cards were super cheap. And then you bought them at the high. And, you know, I, I see it all the time. I see it constantly. You know who lives by that model, right? Let's buy high, sell low. Like eighty percent of the eighty percent of the general market for people who collect, that's the way they collect because the the fear, the FOMO takes over, and you know they don't want to miss, uh, you know, the potential next big thing, right? And you know we'll talk. I I think we can talk maybe a little bit more about the psychology a bit later, but. The general market, not a ton of crazy movement. I think some of the most notable moves are Evolving Sky Sleeved Blisters, one of my favorite investments. Um, I started investing in those two years ago. Every time I went to Target, I would clear the shelves uh, before they put buy limits on them. This is when they were, I mean, I didn't have, like, this is before I had connections to the Pokemon world. So I was just like a retail level investor. Mm -hmm. And so I would buy as much Evolving as I could find in the wild, but I only bought sleeved packs. And that those are for the, if you don't know, that's the one that comes like in the cardboard protector. So it's just it cardboard, comes in the cardboard sleeve sleeve. Yeah. But if you don't know what a sleeved pack is, you might not know what a sleeve is. So there's a difference between a sleeved pack and a blister. Blisters are also extremely expensive for evolving right now. And I collected those as well, but those were a later play for me. I bought blisters higher sleeves. I bought at retail and a one sleeve. A sorry for cussing cursed no you did the you did the what's the guy's I name I, I have a question yeah i know but that's what the guy does this guy. he what's always up, puts brother? his finger up yeah what what's guy? up brother oh. sorry for cussing um what was my question good job um <laughs> is there a difference between a booster pack and a blister pack yeah absolutely so Pretty a booster tell. a booster a booster pack is just a loose pack like the final barrier between the cards is a booster pack. Just okay. the one, just the one piece of foil that wraps around the cards. A sleeved pack has cardboard around it that you, you can't see through anywhere. A blister pack has cardboard in the back and a plastic blister that goes over the top. It's called a blister because of the way the plastic is shaped. Generally, blisters will have a pack now, not new blisters, blisters from our collecting age will have a pack a promo and a coin or so there's several different blisters but there's a pack promo coin pack three promos and coin there's a two pack blister which are usually made on the secondary market i have a pretty big position in chilling fusion two pack blisters and then there are three pack blisters which are released by the pokemon company um, that you can buy sometimes distributors get those but i typically buy those just at full retail like i go to the pokemon center website and buy them um Three pack blisters are typically uh, three of the same set and then one promo card. And it's typically like a better promo card, like a more sought after Pokemon. Um, often in the Sword and Shield era, there were a lot of EV promos and three pack blisters, EV or EV evolutions. Um, there's like a really good Fusion Strike Sylveon one or maybe Espeon. There's a Astral Radiance EV. And then the king of three pack blisters in Sword and Shield is the Evolving Skies three-pack blister with the Umbreon promo. That three-pack blister is currently market price of roughly $70, um, which is insane. Well, how much they are boosters were, going for now? Well, right, a booster by itself, market price 12 to 13 on TCG Player, ballpark, impossible to find in any quantity uh, at that price, in, in my experience. Um the the booster packs are getting harder and harder and harder to find booster boxes are like 650 ish tcg player 650 700 um and then sleeved booster packs which is what i what i thought was the most noteworthy thing to talk about from evolving skies the market mm -hmm. price on those is 25 on tcg which means buying those on any kind of stream or any kind of seller who has to pay fees you're going to pay more than that they're probably going to be closer to 32 so right now it i just did the math it would seem to be cheaper to just to buy 
36 booster packs than to buy a booster box of evolving 1000 percent, and that's true of any set across all of pokemon except for the really? newest except for the newest five sets okay absolutely booster boxes always command a premium all right yeah well i was also thinking like when i bought an obsidian booster box from you at like mm -hmm. 120 mm -hmm. was i'm was i paying more no when you buy a booster box from a retailer generally you pay less when you're talking about modern sets right okay only. like current like sets that are currently in rotation very easy to get Right, the okay. reason behind that is because the fees that we incur as a retailer are significantly lower on a booster box than they are per pack. If I do one transaction on a $120 booster box, I pay my fee plus 30 cents for that transaction. If I do 36 transactions, I, play, I pay my fee plus 30 cents times 36. And to gotcha. lose 30 cents on a booster pack is a huge impact versus losing 30 cents on a $120 booster box. Gotcha. So if I have a booster pack priced at $399 and I lose 30%, I'm losing 8% of my margin on that pack. Plus my 6% fee means I lose 14%. Uh, gotcha. So all, almost all uh, e-commerce sites, like Shopify is a really popular one. Um, there's many others. They all charge transaction fees. So this right. is this goes beyond all the percentages that they take, the credit card processing, the money that they need to make. They also just charge you a straight out fee per transaction. And typically those fees are around 30 cents per. Um, so when you sell, what like my experience is when you sell loose packs, you have to sell them at a 15% higher price overall or whatever, 20 to cover the to, fees. To cover the fees. Gotcha. And also to cover the fact up to cover the shipping to cover everything else that's involved with one single pack being sold um, there's a lot of time that goes into each particular sale after the sale is made like for example in my i mean on my stream if you, most of the people who listen to this podcast watch my stream or know of my stream but every person who purchases off my stream gets extra stuff if it's their first order they get an extra five v cards if it's not their first order they get a business card a sticker and then whatever my postage is. So like my, the like the bubble mailer or the box or whatever, I ship it in. A sticker is like five to eight cents, depending on which one they get. The business card cost comes down to like less than a penny. But if you multiply that by over, you know, a thousand orders, it makes a really, really big difference. So selling a thousand loose packs, well, let's just say 216 packs. I can probably do the math right now. 216 He's gonna packs. He's going to do the math. Yeah, I'm going to do the math. 216 packs times eight cents per that's seventeen dollars and 28 cents per case of booster boxes just in stickers if i sell them one pack at a time okay so i would make up uh, per case i would make seventeen dollars and 20 cents more if i sold as booster boxes and that's just the sticker i pay 11 cents per bubble mailer times 216 that's another 23 dollars and 76 cents uh, the business cards, let's just call them a penny. That's another $2.16. So between those three items, you're looking at a difference of $50 a case in extra material that goes into selling packs. Gotcha. And for me um, as a, a streamer, it's different too. Sorry to keep harping on the same thing, but I think it's an interesting question. To me as a streamer, and maybe this is wrong, maybe people hate this about me and this is maybe reasons people leave my stream, but if somebody buys one pack, or two packs on my stream, I try to create a, like a, I want that experience for them to be just as impactful as someone buying 10 booster boxes. In fact, oftentimes I will treat that person. Uh, I'll, I'll give Use them your more. words wisely. I'll give, I'll give them more. Like I want them to understand that they're equally important. So I'll give them more free stuff. I'll throw in extra cards, whatever the case may be. I'll give them the time that, that, I would want to receive on a stream because there was a time that that's all I could buy. I have an issue with one of your statements. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you said you always give out free shit. Yeah. You got a sticker and a business card at minimum in every order. Well, all I, Oh, fine. That's all I ever you're talking did. about, you're talking about like free V cards and free EXs. I'm just being and an asshole. No, you're, you're, I understand what you're talking about. And in my stream, 
I give free hits to people who don't get hits for people that like that. People like you and some of my other regulars end up sending back the free hits anyway. So it's like, <laughs> why bother? I wait until we find like if like the Arcanine and Ivysaur, for example. Like that's cool. You're gonna like those. Those are gonna go in your binder. Totally happy to give you that. But I'm not gonna give you a freaking Bolton V every time you open a bad pack because you're gonna end up either selling all the V's for 30 cents a piece or sending them back to me. Like it's just not something that would impact your buying experience positively. Oh, they, yeah, they all go back to you to right. give back to the to the other people. to give to I the like, other people. I much people rather who... go to somebody who will be like, oh shit, he just gave exactly. me a Bolton V. Where I'm just going to be like, oh, cool, a Bolton V. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's the point I'm trying to make about the people who can only open one or two packs at a time on a stream. I understand that people ordering on a stream are absolutely paying a premium. You're paying premiums for many different reasons. For me, I stream on TikTok. You're paying TikTok to open, right? A lot of my pricing reflects the fees that TikTok charges me. So you're paying TikTok. You're paying me for my time. You're paying me for my materials. And you're paying me to make a profit. I have to pay for the product. I have to make a profit on the product. I have to account for my time. I can't just count a small profit margin. And all the supplies that I use, you pay for that. Like, let's say you open a pack and you end up not getting any hits. And all I end up giving you is like a free V. Or like sometimes people will be like, just don't know the order. Mm -hmm. You're still like part of the price is the fact that I have to buy 10,000 penny sleeves a month. And I have to buy 4,000 top loaders a month. That all goes into the, the cost of the pack. Otherwise, well, I, just, I would go out of business. You know what I mean? Yeah, you also just uh, navigated away from what you were originally saying. Specifically yeah, we were, to the person. You were saying, after I said that, I'd rather go to somebody who's going to be like, oh, shit, a Bolton V. You said that's why I do that with people who buy one packs. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I want them to have a great experience on the stream is, is more or less what it comes down to because... They're paying, oh yes, they're paying a premium, I think is where I went. I, I got my wires right, crossed yeah. up, but they're paying yeah. a premium. They're they're undoubtedly paying more to me than what they could be paying for that pack. They could get it for a dollar cheaper or whatever. But when you're only able to spend five or ten dollars and it's like your fun money for the week, I want it to be really, really fun for you. Right. Versus, and that's I also agree, which is why I send back all the the V's and right. all of that fun and, stuff. I, w I would say that 80% of my regular customers are either giving me stuff to give to new people, donating to one another, trading in favor of a newer person, or somehow positively contributing to the TCG community that we have. 80 to 90%. There are, there are very few people who rip regularly on my stream who don't positively impact the experience for the newcomer which i think is incredible and as a business person i love it because there's nobody more important than the newest customer in the room agree all my all my regulars i'm in eternally grateful for but eventually will go i would go out of business if i didn't have new customers coming in so You're welcome I think it's it's just it's important. I don't, how did we land there from sleeved packs of evolving skies going to twenty five dollars? I don't know where the disconnect happened. Did I wrap up on that? We never I mean, even I, made it to the market update. No, not really. I mean, we said there wasn't much moving. I wanted to talk a little bit about evolving skies, um, right? And then you brought up the sleeved, and then I said, yeah. "What's the difference so, between a booster and a blister?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that was that's where we that's somehow where we, we ended off. up here. Yeah. That's where we got off track was the booster and blister thing. Okay. So, uh, sleeved, bl sleeved booster packs of evolving skies market price, 25 bucks, which means if you buy them on stream 32 plus now that's significant because any person listening to this podcast, anyone who, you know, shops for Pokemon stuff at target or Walmart, could have the exact same position in Evolving Skies that I have. And when I say position, I'm using it as like an investment term. When you buy 10 stocks, you have a, a position of 10 shares in a company. So I have a position in Evolving Skies sleeved boosters that I bought at retail from Target right down the street from my house. I have probably 50 of those ballpark. I, I, I don't know. I wish I had 10,000, but I just bought them and stuck them in a box. Those packs have 
five X my money in about a year's time. Now it's theoretical gains because I have to sell them and we'll talk about the joys of selling, but anyone could have done that. And I bought those packs before they were more than $5 a pack. I bought them when that was the regular price of the pack. And that's what I think is so cool about investing in the English market. Japanese market is very difficult. The Jap Japanese Pokemon market is extremely volatile and you have to be very, very, very tuned in to invest. But the English just, market... Yeah, I just interrupt you? Yes. I think it's funny we're talking about buying and selling and all that. I just got a message from Facebook Marketplace that someone wants to buy the Blood Moon Ursula <laughs> at $50. Perfect. That's great. Tell them yes. Tell them you're just wrapping up an investment pod, Pokemon investment podcast, but you'd be happy to give them a great deal. And in, then I'll send them a uh, link. The morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Link them in. And then a picture like this. <laughs> so there you go. I got to take it down off my Instagram. Um, Facebook Marketplace, we'll, we need to talk about for sure. That's a very uh, good. It's my new good, best friend. Good way for, yeah, for uh, an average consumer to sell Pokemon stuff. Um. I am your average consumer. Yeah, I think you rep I mean you represent the average consumer market of Pokemon. Uh, you know, you you're someone who enjoyed the game as a kid, who enjoyed collecting as a kid, got out of it, got back into it either during 2016 or or during the pandemic, and now you buy and sell Pokemon on a as a Do you hobby. Like keep track of when I got back into it. Well, 2000 I mean that's not when you got back into it. That's when people got back into Pokemon. Like X Y evolution buying again when evolutions came out. You and every other Pokemon investor. That's why stuff from 2002 to 2016. Oh, no, I'm basic. You're not basic. You're just following the same trend as the rest of the market. But that's why everything from 2002, 2004 to 2016 is printed way, 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 way less than all the 2016 sets. And then there was Sun and Moon, 2017 to 2019, Sword and Shield, 2019 to 2021, 22. And now we're into Scarlet Violet. Um, so Evolving Skies, 5X in price. I have positions in all sleeved booster packs from the Sword and Shield era. I bought at least one art set of every pack that was available on the shelves when I was collecting cards from the Sword and Shield era. And just stuck it in a box mm -hmm. because it's very hard to be a picker of sets like to say like this is the one that's going to be worth all the money there's usually one in pretty much every generation that's the one team up for example in sun and moon currently evolving skies we had cosmic eclipse another great set uh, also sun and moon that's like half as expensive as team up but still very very strong um so it's hard to pick like who what's going to be the best set in scarlet and violet we don't know there's no sleeved blister sleeve booster packs of 151 so that five dollar investment price point is not really an option for 151 um but i i do believe that even just buying a pack a, a pack of each art type so there's usually four so that's a 20 dollar investment and just sticking it in the closet for a few years can yield you very very good return and we saw that with Evolving Skies. We're, we're going to see it with all of the sets. Evolving Skies will continue to go up and all the other sets will continue to go up. I might and do all, that. I, it's a, I think it's a great way for people to invest because there's a lot of this, like these big investors on YouTube and you know TikTok and whatever, and they talk about investing by the case of Booster Box. That's not right. obtainable. That, that's what people. I'm used to hearing, right? That's not obtainable. So when I first started this, I was a pack at a time kind of buyer. And I would, I, I assembled art sets on weeks that I couldn't afford all four packs. But like, if you go to Target or Walmart or your local grocery store, whoever sells Pokemon cards near you, you can pick up one pack of Obsidian Flames, you know, as long as they like regularly stock their Pokemon cards for the next six months, they'll be available easily. Right. Or Twilight maybe will be a little harder to find because it's kind of hype right now, but like whatever. There's no like crazy mad dash to buy an art set of packs. And it's a modest investment that you can hopefully get some good returns on in the future. So I don't plan on selling my Evolving Skies. That's not why I'm bringing it up. I just thought it was really, really notable that they moved all the way to 25 a pack. And they're just going to keep going up. Sealed market pretty much keeps going up. The demand for sealed is there. The supply dwindles as we open more and more and more stuff and the price naturally just goes up 
And so what we're seeing with 151, the supply continues to drain. Everybody's talking about a reprint, but I haven't heard anything confirmed. You see the prices go up on all the sealed product, Alakazam boxes, Zapdos boxes, all those boxes, they all go up in price because there's less and less out there and more, you know, everybody wants to open them because that's what Pokemon cards are for. <laughs> um, so herein lies the issue. What happens when you don't have a massive platform of customers and a website and an established business and it's time to sell Pokemon cards? You do what you... I do. All right. So let's you you take over because I've been talking for like 20 minutes straight. What happens? What tell us about your experience? You're welcome, everybody. Um, so I had initially did I even post them? Uh, no, I didn't see them no. in Discord. The the singles that you sold, I didn't see in Discord. There was a reason for that. I don't remember why I didn't put them in Discord. I think it's because whenever I put something in Discord, everybody thinks I'm joking around and nobody ever buys. <laughs> um, which is fair because more than you know, ninety percent of the time, I am just fucking around. In Maybe Discord. it's because your timestamp was you just holding the slab next to your face like no, this. No, I posted it again with a real timestamp, but like two days later. Yeah, whatever. Um. <laughs> uh. So this morning, I decided to take three cards, um, and put them on Facebook Marketplace. I didn't even know that you listed them this morning. Yes, literally this morning. Um, eighty percent value. Well, I started a little higher than eighty percent, but we wound up at about eighty percent. I started with uh, two hundred dollars. Um, within. Within 10 minutes, I already had some guy who was like, I'll take two of them. And I was, you know, I really wanted to sell all three. Um, so he's, I told him, take two of them for 100. I said, I'll throw in the third, make it 180. He said, I'll let you know. Told him where I'll be all day. He said, it's on my way to work. I'll stop by and pick up, you know, we'll do the, the deal, the deed. And uh, he wound up taking all three for 180, straight up cash. Uh, I've never been happier <laughs> getting straight up cash out of nowhere like that. It was a super good experience in my opinion, uh, being my first time ever selling on Facebook marketplace. Mm -hmm. I got maybe six or seven people that did contact me and I told them all like, Hey, I'm in talks with somebody right now. If it doesn't go through, I'll let you know. Everybody was super cool about it. They're like, all right, yeah, cool. Let me know. Um, so I did just read that one message that it wasn't for the blood moon or Solana. That was somebody saying that they wanted to buy it, um, buy the, the three cards. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was already sold. Um, so yeah, I mean, what about other time, experiences you've had with selling stuff? Well, really the only other thing I've ever sold was that master set. And, I facilitated that so that yeah, I mean was my pretty quick and painless was, for you. Well, leading up to you taking over it was kind of an I did post it in Discord a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And there was no bites. Right. Uh we have maybe 550 people in the Discord, maybe 600 people in our Discord. So it's a pretty limited market compared to Facebook that has six million people. Also New York City. Right. That's I mean, a distinct advantage that you have. Yeah. There are somebody, 6 million people that will walk by your shop in a seven day time frame. <laughs> and only five people came in today. Um, <laughs> yeah, but definitely, you know, um, I was weary. Is that the correct word? I'm tired. Excuse me if that's not Le I was Leary. I was leery. Was you are, you are weary. Because I tired. am weary. Right? <laughs> I was leery about um, going to Facebook Marketplace at all, and I was even thinking about taking a trip to a a card shop that's also in the city. But I know that if I go to a card shop, I'm not getting anything more than seventy percent. Yeah, typically 65, 60 to sixty-five. That's Some card I, yeah. shops are stronger, but generally sixty to sixty-five. They have a lot of a lot of overhead, and it's very difficult to be a card shop owner right now. I would not want to own a brick and mortar store. So I figured going there, I was just going to leave upset losing three cards that I don't have dupes of that I do like. And I'd rather, you know, at least not be upset getting rid of them. Mm -hmm. 
because I, I, you know, I needed the cash, obviously. Otherwise, they'd be still sitting in the binder. Um, but I needed fast, ca fast cash. I knew Discord wasn't going to be an option because there was no shout outs in fast cash off that. And for some reason, it clicked in my head Facebook Marketplace. And so I did it. And yeah, so that was a good. It sounds like a very good overall experience. When we sold your master set, I had a buyer who I knew would take it. So I moved that pretty quick once it landed in my court. And then you have this third experience with this Blood Moon Ursa Luna, um, where you're Nobody having a little bit it. of a, a harder time selling it. Now, I think it's really important to talk about selling Pokemon product when you talk about investing in Pokemon product. And I don't necessarily think this needs to be like an investment one on one episode, but I do think selling product is significantly harder than people think realize yeah i 100%. Have no, i'm not surprised that it was easy for you to sell three alternate art or sar cards at under market in a day that makes very good sense to me <laughs> see but that's the thing i'm also not an idiot and i'm not saying other people are idiots <laughs> <laughs> um but when i see somebody selling a card at full market i know that's just gonna sit there right so i understand the concept of if i want to move this i gotta lower my price yep i need it to go so i want to make it 80 percent because that's why i got 80 percent for it otherwise i probably would have still been sitting on the one although that right. guy just said he'll buy it for 100 but it's gone now <laughs> right <laughs> but um but yeah, like I also understood that you cannot, there's no shot of selling anywhere at full market value. It's just, it's not realistic. Even, even the best vendors that I know that I deal with regularly, that I buy tens of thousands of dollars of, of product with every year, they sell under market at shows to regular customers. Collecticon is kind of an outlier because it's an it's a massive event and people expect to pay market or more than market there but at the regular shows vendors are wheeling and dealing to move product you know they're right. buying at 70 75 and they're selling at 80 85 those are really slim margins and but um, in volume I, it, I mean it adds up of course it adds up absolutely um and there's you know there's also the the argument to be made that the ability to do volume is is limited by your capital. Like, what can you expend to create a a, a volume? Right. Right. You, you don't have you don't have unlimited money. You have to start to make decisions on what to buy and what not to buy. And sometimes great deals walk by. You got to make sure you're ready to pick up the great deals. You got to have a reserve. There's a lot that goes into being a vendor. Never mind all the fees they pay. I mean, a table, one table at Woodbridge this weekend. There were probably sixty tables maybe more one table was $250 to, to be able to vent there. You had to pay 250 bucks. That's a lot of profit to have to make. You know, yeah. that means yeah. if your margins are 25%, you have to do a thousand dollars in sales and there's 60 people competing to do a thousand dollars in sales just to break even, you know? So it's, um, I think it's a, it's an interesting, interesting topic that people don't really talk about enough. Um, how 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 hard it can be sometimes to to sell product, especially when you have things that are a little bit less desirable, uh, PSA nines, for example. I think you should rephrase that. How hard it is to sell product and for come away <laughs> no, come away happy, happy, content. Yeah, so for for I a mean, profit, it's easy. Yeah, I guess yeah, for a profit. I definitely didn't make no. Pro I mean. I opened a lot of Paldean Fates to get these cards. Right. So there's no shot I made a profit off that, which is fine with me. Yeah, that was different, I, though. Where I mean, yeah. you, you didn't buy them. Like, you didn't buy them raw and then try to sell them and make money. You bought right. them in right. your right. collecting and then sold them out of your collection. So I see your point of saying leaving happy, feeling fulfilled with the sale. Right. As well. right. I as was thinking... Average consumer. Sure. Yeah. I was thinking about, like, buying to sell, but you're talking about selling things that you own in your collection. Right. I, I wasn't trying to flip anything. No, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that's a, a really good example of a Facebook marketplace. And there's also lots and lots and lots of scams that run on Facebook, Instagram, Discord, TikTok, anywhere, really. Anywhere somebody can scam you other they any, you know, they will. 
<laughs> don't uh, send anything until you get the money oh my gosh man i see that so frequently it blows my mind that i i've never had to deal with that but that's like i would never send that's not true you, with... you dealt with it with me one time but i'm a i'm a trusted middleman that's different if i'm selling on facebook marketplace and the no, guys like, right hey, right send it no no shot i'm sending something without like you that's completely different i have your phone number i know your wife's name i know your children's <laughs> names that's different yeah trusted middleman right but on facebook marketplace or i mean ebay i get ebay you get the money first no matter what i think um no, no? nope nope but you're it's supposed to get it so you're supposed to get instant payout but they don't always do instant payout but it's ebay so i wouldn't really be that worried ebay sucks to deal with okay don't do ebay then it's not um, that you can't do ebay but you have to understand that you're going to lose on ebay occasionally the customer will beat you on ebay all right so don't sell on ebay just don't do it um it comes down to volume a lot of people are really successful on ebay back to my point <laughs> if you don't get the money first don't freaking send the cards you want to hear something insane uh, always so here's how it works here's how i get paid from tiktok when i do sale through tiktok you log in you purchase 50 dollars worth of stuff you buy an etb let's say an etb is a good example you buy one etb i open the etb live on camera therefore mm -hmm. ruining the resale value of said etb i could no, maybe I pack it out and get close and then i have to open the cards right and once they're once the packs are open now i really have virtually no resale value unless there's a good hit but i try not to build a business on gambling and then i have to ship you the cards and either i don't get paid for any of this once usps scans it as delivered then i get paid that's different you, wait you as a customer can dispute said delivery and they have there's something called a reserve no i mean it is what it is this is people i this has happened to me it happens there's a reserve so tiktok holds a portion of my money in reserve indefinitely like they just have like a chunk of money and if i get like a charge back or a customer says like hey this isn't what i ordered they pull it pretty much immediately refunding the customer and then i have to fight i have to prove whatever now i open everything on live so you know whatever I, when I have... i'm saying don't send cards unless you get paid yeah i know what you're talking about i'm just saying it's insane like how the, the setup of tiktok is insane mm -hmm. if i do twelve thousand dollars in sales in a week i don't get any of that money until the product gets delivered to people i send out twelve thousand dollars worth of product with zero dollars coming to me until it gets delivered as a consumer that's fair as a retailer i understand that's insane yeah now it protects the consumer which i like right like you know that i don't get paid till you get your stuff and that's good but as a retailer it makes it very difficult to sell because that means i need three three weeks of rolling inventory capital in order to sustain my sales which is gotcha. difficult <laughs> now that only applies to tiktok because you also have a site yeah, so Shopify, I get paid a lot faster on. Right, okay. Shopify payouts are essentially like 48 to 72 hours. Like, I get paid before I ship anything out from Shopify. All right, that's not bad. That's Which just... is how almost every other retailer does. The only retailer I know that does it the way that TikTok does it is TikTok. Hmm. Amazon doesn't do it that way. eBay doesn't do it that way. All the big guys, nobody does it that way. But that's interesting. Does. Again, safe for the consumer. Right. What? Because it's, and it's honestly, they needed to do it that way in the beginning. I've ordered stuff on TikTok and then like I ordered a chair, like a desk chair, like one I'm sitting in mm -hmm. and I received nothing, but I got a delivery notice saying it was delivered. I don't know how they did the scam. And now I've ordered something from you once and I got an empty package. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fucking yeah, I with that. you. <laughs> no, I do that. Did you actually? Cause I do that a lot. Uh, I might have, but that might have been my own fault because I ordered like two packs. So I, there's I just, glitches that happen. Get, yeah, yeah. And in I'm order for me to get mad. payment, no, it's 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 annoying, and I, I'll talk about it as a seller. It's another annoying thing. 
in order for me to get paid, I have to send something. So I'll right. often send an empty package with a little note inside of it and a thank you card and a sticker. And it says like, hey, TikTok generated two labels. And then I send it. That's why you against... also often hear you on stream with like somebody says, don't know the pack. You say, well, I have to send you something. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I'll send whatever. A thank you card, a note, whatever it is. And it's a it's another added expense uh, just for no reason. I just have to send it. I can't combine the orders for whatever reason. There's a glitch. It thinks it's in a different warehouse. Shopify Shopify and TikTok have two separate warehouses, like in the digital universe. They don't actually, everything's in the same room. But digitally speaking, TikTok thinks that like certain products are at what's called like the US pickup warehouse and other products are at what's called the Shopify warehouse. And even though the addresses of those two places are identical, they still get shipped from different warehouses. So if you buy like a pack that's listed in the US pickup warehouse and a pack that's listed in the Shopify warehouse, it'll split the order and I have to send two packages. And for whatever reason, things just randomly get changed to the U.S. pickup warehouse. Almost everything's in the Shopify warehouse, but whatever. It happens all the time. It happens at least three times, four times a week that I have to send double packages out. That's interesting. The crazy world of the other side of the <laughs> average customer. What happens on the other side of the camera is not smooth sailing most of the time. It's, it's, no, a, it's just, complex. It's for sure. Sitting complex. there sweating, thinking, I hope they don't dispute this. Basically, I mean, there were times just when so all of my orders. When I was uh when I was selling 151 ETBs, you remember there was like a maybe two month time frame where I was going through 20 cases a week of 151 ETBs. I was like the yeah. only person on TikTok who had them at a at a good price. I had a guy order 13 ETBs in 13 separate transactions, and I was certain that they were gonna get charged back or like something was wrong um turns out he was scamming tiktok not me thank god he didn't also scam me um i caught on by like order number seven that it was a scam against tiktok not a scam against me but then i'm thinking okay well if he's willing to scam tiktok he's probably willing to scam me too but fortunately that didn't happen and i got paid out for all of those but basically he created 13 different accounts probably using a vpn i'm not really sure how and he got coupons, 50% off coupons on all those accounts. So he bought 13 151 ETBs off me at like $25 a piece oh, or something insane. That's awesome. Good for that guy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And his address was, it was like, you know, 1515 Mockingbird Lane 1, 1515 Mockingbird Lane 2, 1515 Mockingbird Lane 3, all the way up to, there was one that was like zero. And then another one was like zero, zero. It was insane. That guy is my idol. He, I don't, I mean, the amount of time he must have used to do that. Yeah, but how much you only money get, did he save? <laughs> well, he saved 50% there, off 13. I mean, at the time, weeks. they were like 50 bucks, right? So 25 times 13, $325. That's it. Took, if it took him six dollars or six hours, he was saving $54 an hour. That's pretty good. That's yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Yeah, fifty-four dollars an hour is pretty good. Pretty good way to save. Hey, if you're listening <laughs> to this guy, can you teach me the ways? I don't know how. Yeah, really, I, I genuinely don't know how he did it. It was pretty impressive. Um, all right. So that's some of the things that I wanted to bring up about selling, um, I think a lot of people assume that they can get, they like pull a card and then they look it up, and they'll see like the number on price charting or the number on TCG player. And they'll just think like, okay, this card is worth $400. I can go tomorrow and turn this into $400. That's like very rarely the case. I also think that people don't know how to use price charting. I think that's another common error. And people just look at that first number up top and assume that's like a fully accurate market price of the card. And it's not, mm -hmm. it's like a rolling average of sales and almost any educated buyer is going to go and look at all of the actual last solds and take only the most recent ones to come up with a more realistic number of what the market's actually doing. Right. Um, so those are just like two common pitfalls I see. Um, people also don't condition their stuff, and that's huge. I can't tell you how many times people have tried to sell me collections. They're like, well, this card's worth $150. Like, yeah, but it's folded in half, man. Like, <laughs> It's not, it's worth $4. I don't know what to tell you. And I don't even want it now because it's folded in half and you didn't tell me that. So I can't do anything with this. And I mean, I think there's also like some 
minutia between like near mint light play when you go on tcg player it's near mint light play mod play heavy play damaged when you go into like discords or like facebook groups there's like you know front near mint minus back lp plus like for one card like what the fuck are you talking about the card is lightly LP played plus. the card is lightly played if you're saying front near mint minus back lp plus the card is lightly played that's yeah. how it should be priced unless it's a vintage card if it's vintage i understand especially on like the really really big cards because then you're likely buying it raw to grade it right so if there's you're selling a gold star then yeah the front and the back both matter but if you're talking about like a modern alt art that's not moonbrion for example it does like that's it the card's lp it's going to sell at lp if you try to sell it online if you try to sell it to a vendor and the back of its lp but the front of its near mint the card is lightly LP. played yeah so it's just another thing that people don't really know how to do is condition their cards another thing that people don't know how to do is under I, or people don't know maybe is just because a card is fresh out of a pack does not mean it's near mint and also does not mean that it's a psa 10 those are people think all the time that it's just because something comes out of a pack it's a 10 that's not the case oh i know that firsthand 80 percent of the time it's not the case in fact and you know also i would say maybe 40 percent of the time with the current quality control standards we have in place, the cards aren't even near mint coming out of the pack. Mm. You know, I mean, rarely you'll get one damaged, but a lot of the times the cards come out of the pack and they look like they're lightly played. You know, they'll That's have whitening yeah. in several spots. They'll have, you know, we, we sometimes it just happens. Oh, There's yeah. bad quality whitening control. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see a lot of whitening. So that's why I think that's, you know, just some important like nuances um, for people who, are maybe considering getting into this. I have people ask me all the time, like, oh, I want to do this. Like, it looks easy or whatever, you know, like it's just so, there's so many nuances that people don't um, As an average understand. consumer, my starting, like this is my, I guess my tip to mm -hmm. those uh, who are, you know, starting out and whatnot. As an average consumer, um, I will basically start out at like an 80 to 85% of market price. For your asking online. price, yeah, that's where I would start. And I, yeah, people are going to try to negotiate. I had people all day messaging me, I'll do it for 150, and I'm like, no, I'm pretty strong on 200, but like, I went down to 180. Right. Not a huge, you know, 20 bucks, it's not a huge, uh, a huge difference to me. To me, um, but yeah, I my asking, my starting asking is usually 80 to 85 percent. And there's all different theories on that. I was at a card show Sunday, Woodbridge, and a vendor buddy of mine bought like a big box of basically bulk. It's not, it wasn't actually bulk. It was just like, like stuff, like cards that were all worth like two bucks. Okay. And he's like, how much do you want for it? And I'm like thinking about it in my head. I'm looking, there's like 700 cards in there. They're probably worth between like 50 cents and $2 a piece. I was going to give him the box that it, that the cards were in. And I'm like, you know what, dude, just give me 500 bucks for it. We'll call it a day. It's a good deal for you. Good deal for me. It's, it's all done. And he's like, I'll give you uh 300. And I'm like, bruh, maybe you don't know how I operate. I told you the price. I didn't tell you a starting point. I didn't tell you a negotiation tactic. This costs $500. If you would like to buy it for me, it would, it will cost you $500. And I know I'm I'm in the minority there, but when I when I deal with people, I don't like to negotiate because I try to give very strong and great pricing right from the start, especially if I'm dealing with people in person. If I'm at a card show or something like that and somebody wants to buy a product off me, I just tell them what the price is. It's yes, yes, no, no. This is the price. Are we buying it or not? And if it's a no, not a problem. When I buy I try not to negotiate too much. And you saw that on my streams at Collecticon. You probably saw it with me in person at Collecticon. And for me, what that's done has, I've developed like a really good rapport with a lot of these vendors. Mm -hmm. and when I go up, I say, how much does this item cost? And I, they don't tell me the sticker price. They say, well, for you, it's this much. They tell me their real price. And then when they ask me, how much is this? You know, for the most part, they understand that's the price. Or I'll say like, I'd like to get, this where I'm consigning this for a customer, they're asking prices this, they might have a little room, you know. So I think that's another important tactic. But on Facebook Marketplace, you should expect everybody to lowball you. 
So I completely, I don't know how, completely forgot that I also sold a lot of cards last night. <laughs> okay. I don't even uh, know about this. <laughs> no, you don't. And I don't know. <laughs> I completely forgot. I sold them to uh, Adam, Adam Wicklin on stream. Yep, yep. Uh, Adam, you just fella. doxed. <laughs> I didn't, no, I didn't say the full thing. <laughs> yeah, good. oh, now you know it's really not his name. <laughs> I do know that it's not his name. Um, What, 27 people listen to us. <laughs> Adam's one of them, and the other 26 all know him. Um, So I had a bunch of dupes from Paldean Fates. Uh, I had 36 baby shinies. I had um, 13 full art trainers, like eight full art uh, Pokemon, three super, uh, three ultra rares, and the Nimona SAR. I sold it to him for 120. Now, I don't even know the percentage of what everything was worth Mm -hmm. because I was too lazy as the average consumer to sit there and, you know, price every single thing out. But I did look at what was expensive and I had a good amount of cards in there that by themselves could have gotten me. um, I know it's not actual, but like market price was like 10 and 12 bucks. So there was at least, I don't know, seven or eight. So if you're looking at it, that could have gotten me 50 to 60 alone. Right. Um, so what instead of what because I know that like three of the two of the baby shinies were around like uh 10 bucks. Um, so like for the baby shinies, what I did in my head was I just priced them at 250 to three dollars each. Yep. And then just was just like, all right, I think 120 is a fair price. The the main card in there is like the Namona SAR. And that was like twelve dollars on mar- uh, on uh, price charting. So I thought one twenty was a fair price. Also, it's going to Adam. I like Adam, right? Um. So I, I don't. Why did I bring this up? <laughs> uh, we were talking I about guess, negotiating and not versus not negotiating. I think it was more along the lines of as the average consumer. I'm going to stop saying that. Um, <laughs> pricing wise. Like I I know that I, I wasn't gonna get ten dollars for this card, ten dollars for this card, ten dollars for this card. Right. Then again, I also wanted to make that quick sale. So in my head, mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, thirty six baby shinies. When I was at the card show, when we went to Collecticon, um, all the baby shinies I was buying, I was buying for like three to four dollars. Right. So I priced them similar similarly. <laughs> um. And just sold them. It was a quick and easy sale. Yep. And I think that's, you know, people should stop fretting over 50 cents. I see people like, there's this one guy I deal with and he'll spend an hour literally negotiating with me over $10. And it's like, dude, you just valued your time at $10 an hour. You're making a $5,000 purchase with me. What are you doing? That's, Why yeah. are you wasting my time and yours? I told you the price 17 times. This is the price. I'm not giving you a discount. What are you trying to negotiate for? There's no yeah. need. I wasn't going to so, sit there and say, I have a Scyther baby shiny. It's worth $12. I want 10 right. for it. Like here's right. 36 baby shinies, $3 each. Yep. There you go. That's the way to do it. There you and go. That's why that's it sells. The way to do it. That's why, that's why it's sold, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, hopefully, uh, hopefully this is interesting content for everybody listening. Let us know in the comments what you thought of the idea of talking about selling Pokemon. Um, I think it's an important topic to cover because people really don't understand the the nuances or the ins and outs of being able to sell the product that they they end up with. And I think it's a good part, a good way to get educated. I think, um, yeah, I think this was a good um, way for people to see realistically how it's going to work if they're planning on selling things that they they've never sold before like i i barely ever sold i did two sales in the past two days that went like that yeah but i still have the blood moon or saluna that's not going right 
yeah, it's a little bit less desirable. And the, the way that people get the $55 or whatever the market price of that card is out of it or $60 is by selling it on TCG player or eBay. I personally really, really like the card. I was hyped on it. And I think I still think you made the right decision by not trading it because you likely statistically would have ended up with a $20 or $30 card. Don't get me wrong. Card. I like the card. But you like, like $60 $50. or $50 <laughs> more right now. I totally get that. Yeah. Most likely I'm going to wind up keeping it because I don't see it going. I could it be might. wrong. You never know. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe I'll buy it do, on uh, Saturday. It's time, want, man. I'm pulling it up right now. Rankings? All right. I'm going to do some rankings. It is time for our weekly rankings. Now I'm going to have to start doing that every goddamn episode. I hope not. I hope that we don't do that. Oh, All you right, don't so like it? I did not. What are we doing now? Uh, how do we do this? We've only done it a few weeks in a row. Do we do a list of 10 and then a second list of a battle party with six? We do. Yeah. We rank 10 blind and then we make a battle party out of a, out of six, right? Right. The first ranking, the blind ranking, the 10 is just our personal favorites. Right. And then and we then do, we do an party. actual battle party. And we're doing Gen 3. Right. Um, it's only Gen 3 Pokemon. Right. Um, you have to set it to one. Yep, I did. We're good. Okay. Uh, the other thing we also started doing with last week's uh ranking was we did uh, I think it was like 15, and we chose from that 15 for the battle party. Oh, yeah, we did like three, didn't we? No, we did like 15 because no, no, no. I mean, we did three separate rankings, we did like oh, this yeah. one, then a battle party of six, and then made a battle party out of 15 Pokemon, right. Wait, no, don't we extract the battle party from the list of 10? And then no. we did a second list? We definitely did. No, no, we That's didn't. Right. Let's, we'll make the list of 10 first, and then we'll do the next things. Pokemon number one in the random generation. Ooh, Tropius. Uh, huh. Tropius is dope. What do you mean? Uh, uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. I hope I don't regret this. This is so tough. Wait, give us your. Where did you fuck up last week? Um, <laughs> a Typhlosion or something was like dead last. Like yeah, some very like good that. Pokemon. I might have it. Some very good Pokemon was in tenth place. That was bad. I had I Chuckle know. number one because you don't. Totodile, Totodile, Chuckle. Right, Totodile was dead last. And then we did a list. Yeah, dude, we definitely made a battle party out of the ten, and then we did a second one. I have it right here. Okay. All right. Pokemon number one, Tropius. He's ranked. We don't reveal ranked. our ranking until the end. Pokemon number two, ooh, Meetang. Hmm. Meetang, you tang, we tang. <laughs> I tang, you tang, we all tang. <laughs> Pokemon number three is Vigoroth. Man, I don't like Gen 3. This is what? Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire, right? Uh, yes, I want to say. Yeah, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Correct. Okay. Number four, Lotad. Okay. <laughs> Number five is Swaylot. All right. Okay. Number That's six, swallows. Latias. There you go. Heater. Number seven, okay. Metagross. That Ready? mattress. Yeah, dumb phone. Mattress. Mattress gross. <laughs> Marsh top. I'm going to regret this. I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. Two more. All right. Number five, or I mean, number whatever, Trap Inch. That was eight. Or no, that was nine. All right. Final, last and final. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Swampert. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I mean, he does not belong where I just put him, but that's okay. I'm not sure. This isn't terrible. The list is not terrible. Okay. So for your number 10, so what do we got? Lotad. All right. I respect it. Number nine. Lotad. 
Sway a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, eight. Vigoroth. Tropius. Not a fan. Uh, I don't mind Tropius at all. I call him Tropius, but I don't mind them at all. Tropius, Tropius, I don't know. Tropical, I think. Trop. Okay. Uh, number seven. Me Tang. Vigoroth. Okay. Born. Number six. Swampert. Tropius. Hmm. It was the only thing I had open. Yeah. It would have been higher. A number Swampert, five. You know? Swampert? Wait, wait, wait. Swampert would have been higher than six? No, I mean like higher on the better in the ranking. Yeah, better in the ranking than six? Yeah, it would have been closer hmm. to one is what I'm trying to say. Wow, really? Okay. I, I get it, but I don't think Swampert's a particularly cool Pokemon. And I just out of this group, it. out of this group, it would have been closer. I, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah, I would have moved. For me, Tropius would have been switched with my Swampert, but we'll get there. Number five. Meteng. Trap Meteng. Inch. Okay. Number four. Marsh Top. Same. Nice. All right, we got one. Number three, Swampert. Metagross. I respect that. Yeah, I liked it there. Who's your number two? I'm Metagross. Latias. What? I was saving number one for something really exciting. Bad move. Number one's Latias for me. Wait, what was your number two? Oh, Metagross. Okay, yeah, mine was Latias. Number one, Trap Inch, which I'm not mad at because I am a huge fan Terrible. of Flygon. Terrible. I'm not Terrible. mad at that. All right. Flygon is fucking awesome. And Trap Inch evolves into Flygon. Let us know in the comments what your what your ranking would have been. All right, Let's now make we're a battle party. Out of these ten, right? Out of these ten, we make a battle party and then we theoretic we theorize again about who would win. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. All right, I got mine. I think we're gonna have. I'm gonna have a dupe no matter what I do. I made sure I didn't have a dupe. Huh? Huh? I, I don't think I would act. Uh, maybe I'll take. I'll take Vigoroth in in sixth. Same Z's. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right, All right. So I'm taking Latias. Yep. Number Metagross. one, Latias. Metagross, number two. Um, I'm going to take Tropius. Swampert. Tropius was my number three. I don't think they have to be in any particular order. Well, it's just interesting how we're choosing them. I think we chose them in the way of. I just went from one down. Oh, maybe I, I did through. too. All right. Well, Swampert's number four for me. Tropius well, was number three. Uh, I did take Tropius at, at your number four slot. Sure. Okay. I didn't write it down, but yeah. Well, okay. Sure. What are the last two? Uh, Swaylot and Vigoroth. And Vigoroth. Yeah, we got yep. the same battle party. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> it's the only, it's the only team. That First time. Sense. First time we've done that. But yeah, those, that's the only team that makes sense. I was debating at the end, whether I should take Trap Pinch or Vigoroth. Vigoroth. I just took because of the fighting. That's exactly why he ended up in, uh, yeah. on my team as well. All right, that was dope. I'm Look glad that our teams were the same. We're the best. All right, now we're going to generate 15 Gen 3 Pokemon. And we're going to make them completely we're gonna new. Each, we're going to each make a battle party, a totally new battle party. And then we're going to fight them theoretically. Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Azuril, Metagross, Swablu, Wingle, Speed Deoxys, Curlia, Dustox, Groudon. Minon, Pelipper, Silcoon, Talo, Duskull, Normal Deoxys, and Lunatone. Can we take both Deoxys? I mean, yeah. Or should I, like, there might be, like, some kind of filter that it won't allow for uh, a dupe like that. I need these PNG files to make emotes. These are really good PNG files. Let me see something. Yeah, I could make a filter and run it again so that it wouldn't give us Deoxys twice. Okay, do it. Form type. Oh, 
Oh man, I don't really know how to use it. Maybe like that. That should be default only. Okay. Like this. Those might be default. Yeah. Let's see if I did it right. Nope. Not even a little bit. That was not default. Oh man, that list is so much better though. Okay, hold on. Taking all of them. Let's just try this and see if that works. Yeah, good penis. yeah, that's the one. I had it right the first time. All right, so here it is. Okay. Oh, wait. No, it's not. It has amp toxtricity. But either way, there's and no dupes. It has dugong. Dugong shouldn't be in oh, there. Yeah, or uh, right. Raikou. Why is it doing that? Go to generation. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's try this. Okay. Oh, that looks right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Can you see all of them? Ludicolo. So, for those of you that are just listening, Ludicolo, Lilip, Shelgon, Relicanth, Wingle, Absol, Spiel, Chimico, Shuppet, Dustox, Walrein, Solrock, Lotad, Swellow, and Shiftry. What a team. Dude, this is a rough week. There's no shot we're not choosing the same team. I mean, I only have two that I'm like, yep, they're on I team have three. three, four. I five and six for shits and giggles. I got them. Maybe I'll take this one. Let me see something. Okay. Hmm. Don't love that. All right. I mean, that's as good as it's getting. That was a rough one. Holy cow. Yeah. What do you got? I'm really um, taking, in no particular order, uh, Ludicolo, Sheldon. Not on my list. Also not on my list. Uh, Absol for Special K, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Walren, Walrein, yep. Shift Tree, and for Shits and Giggles, Rolicanth. I think I beat you, honestly. But Probably. obviously I do because I picked my own, you know, I picked the team that I thought was strongest. Walrein, Absol, Shiftry, Lilip, Soul Rock, and Shuppet. Soul Rock was a very high possible on my team. Yeah. So it was actually Shuppet. Yep. Um, I think as far as like actually having to battle these two teams, I would rather I'm have both of those than Shell Going and in Polo. with Walrein and losing and leaving. Yeah. I, Walrein's actually pretty tanky though and has yeah. ice type. That's why I'm going in with Walrein, and that's it. Just Walrein? Yeah. But you're battling against the same batch. You know what I mean? Walrein, Absol, Shift Tree, Lily, Sol Rock, Shuppet. What were yours again? Uh, Ludicolo, Shelgon, Relicanth, Absol, Walrein, and Shift Tree. So the differences were Ludicolo, Shelgon, Relicanth. Ab and then Absol, Walrein, and Shift Tree. So basically, let's let's knock those out. So you're taking Soul Rock, Shuppet, and the and, leap. and the leap against Shelgon, Relicant, and Ludicolo. I may win. I don't think so, dude. What does Ludicolo do? Nothing. Same with Relicanth. Relicanth is water. Isn't it water rock? Yeah. Right. The leap, uh, Soul Rock, and Shuppet. Yeah, no, I definitely take Soul Rock out. I don't know. Doesn't Lud isn't Ludicolo grass water? Or am I wrong? I don't even know what type grass grass loser. <laughs> Not a fan of Ludicolo. Good one. I'm pretty sure Ludicolo is grass water. Yeah, you're right. Water grass. Gen right. Three. So that's pretty. Good. It's pretty unique. That's what it is. That definitely takes out Soul Rock. Yeah. It I also mean, takes you... out the it also takes out Leap. I'm putting Shup it up. Shh. 
Why right. is Ludicolo so strong? Ludicolo is a fearsome sweeper in the metagame by virtue of its access to Swift Swim, which allows it to outspeed the entire unboosted metagame, metagame under rain. So if it were raining, I'd really be hosed. Yeah. I picked the correct team. Yeah, Ludicolo is a stronger Pokemon than I gave him credit for. Dude, bring me back that Gigantamax Snorlax. That was that would have been awesome. Ludicolo takes out Luleep and all right, whatever. So Ludicolo, Rock. fine. No big and then Relicant is just having fun. I, you know what? I either way, I'd be embarrassed to have your team. So I'd rather lose with a good team than win and with a bad me team. And Ludicolo will be sitting there like <laughs> Kicking y'all's ass. Uh, let us know who you take. Nobody let us know last week. Let Got us know me. this week. <laughs> let yeah. us know. Comment, engage, do some stuff. I'm going to try to get a guest. We were supposed to have a guest on tonight. It didn't work out. Um, we need to figure out how to uh, put some like hashtags or something to get this to get some growth going on the podcast. Um, also, please comment ideas. Put it in Discord, something. Give us some more ideas. We struggle every week to think about what you guys want to hear about. So. Let us know. I don't struggle. He struggles. What do you mean you don't struggle? You. I don't sit here and struggle. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, you just wait for me to come up with an idea. And we're, then we'll talk about go off the cuff. Off of the cuff of my idea, right, I am. The, I am the. Out. I am the brainchild of the collective. Not, Unbelievable. Not disagreeing with that. This was Unbelievable. Your idea. That's true. It was my idea. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Let us know what we should talk about next week. We have and fun. And future weeks as well. I'm going to probably cook something and then maybe play a little bit of Red Dead. I was going to say if you wanted to just go on Red Dead because it's already 1230. I got to eat, but we'll figure it out. Until next week, ladies and gents. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. As always, it's always a pleasure to talk to this lovely collecting man for you guys yeah it is you're right that's all i got to say <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in see you next week bye bye